So as the Independence Party candidate, I was excluded from the debate because of that fact. And so I got to Duluth the night before uh, to attend anyway. And I got there and I began to take these uh, photos pretty early. And uh, as I got to the debate, I actually uploaded some movies I took and came into the debate and I see this crowd of Franken supporters outside with their signs. You can see as I approach, this is at the Playhouse, Duluth Playhouse at the depot, which is a historic train depot. And here's a picture of the last known surviving Union soldier at Duluth. Apparently it's from the Duluth area as well. I believe it's Alfred Wolsey. So I come in and here are some of the people who attended. There's a uh, kind of a bailiff there decides whether he's going to let you in or not. So I finally got inside the playhouse, took a seat in the back and began shooting pictures. And here's what it looked like before the debate started. An empty chair uh, just in front of the Duluth Area Chamber of Commerce uh, sign. They're actually the uh, organizers of this broadcast debate. First, you see the hosts of the debate. This is Chuck Frederick. He is the editorial page editor of the Duluth News Tribune, and he's going to be asking the questions. Here's Roger Waden. He is the Education and Policy Director of the Duluth Chamber of Commerce. Uh, these two gentlemen today uh, announced that they were broadcasting this debate live, and I filed an FCC complaint because for a live broadcast, uh, equal time provisions and the First Amendment require that I be treated the same as Senator Franken and his Republican challenger, uh, Mike uh, McFadden. So anyway, here they take their seat. I 
successfully fought to get billions for Doc for harbor improvement. I fought to make sure that the award-winning 148th Fighter Wing became an active associate unit, so it could continue to be in the center of the loose burgeoning aviation sector. Some of the 148th worked with AAR, and I've seen AAR partner with Lake Superior College to train up new mechanics to service the jetliners at the airport. See, we have a skills gap in this country. Three million plus jobs and businesses can't fill because they can't find workers with the right skills. So I took this model of community and technical colleges working with different business sectors to train up skilled workers and made that a focus of Congress's first successful reform of our federal workforce training system. Now more Americans are, and more Minnesotans will have the opportunity to train for these high-skilled, good-paying, middle-class jobs that will make our economy stronger. It's been an honor working with and for the great people of Minnesota and the United States Senate. We have a lot of work to do to make sure that our state and country work for all Minnesotans. And I look forward to this debate to discuss how we can build on what we've achieved so far. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bricker. Uh, Chris, don't be shy about waving the time uh, cards up. Make sure you can't just get your uh, attention or get, you get their attention, I guess. Mr. McFadden. Well, well, sir. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Roger, for the invitation this morning. I want to thank the audience. I appreciate you being here at an early time in the morning, and I want to thank Senator Franken for your service over the last six years. I appreciate it. And I wanted to recognize Franny, and the two of you are celebrating your 39th wedding anniversary. I understand tomorrow, so a day early, I'd like to congratulate you. I was going to use that. <laughs>
private entered the private sector. I believe that the biggest single issue in this country is we've created this professional class of politician that's killing us. And I believe in six years that Senator Franken has become part of that professional class. He has voted with the president 97% of the time. That's a fact. That's not my opinion. He's the most partisan senator in the Democratic Party. He has voted 159 out of 161 votes with the Democratic Party. That makes him the most partisan senator in Washington. That's a fact. That's not my opinion. I left my job, and I put my family at risk because I fundamentally believe that we can do better in this country and this state. We have the opportunity to see our best days ahead of us by getting on to the pathway of growth and prosperity. And it begins with energy and education and effective government. We are sitting on the doorstep of an energy renaissance if we allow it to happen and get the EPA out of the way. I will get pipelines built. I will get the mines open. And that will allow us and allow me to put more money into your pockets and allow us to grow at 4 to 5% a year as opposed to a half a percent to 1% that we've seen under President Obama and Al Franken. Thank you very much, Mr. McFadden. Senator Franken, in the same way, if you believe some of the websites that are out there, some of the commercials I've seen, uh, you're, you're just, just nothing more than a comedian. Don't spend any time in Minnesota. You vote robot-like with Obama and the Democratic Party, as your opponent has pointed out several times, and uh, even proposed uh, abortion on demand. How do you respond, sir, to critics who say you're wrong for Minnesota? Well, I don't subscribe to those websites. <laughs> you know, I always vote in what I believe is in the interest of the people of Minnesota. Um, and i have in, in, in an era where there's been a lot of gridlock, I've worked across party lines to find common sense solutions. I've worked with so many of my Republican colleagues, with Dick Luger on the National Diabetes Prevention Program, which is saving lives, which is 75% of our cost of our health care is on chronic diseases, but that we is one of the biggest. On workforce training with Lamar Alexander, Republican of Tennessee. On pharmaceutical safety, I did a bill with Pat Roberts, Republican of Kansas. The Farm Bill, one of the most bipartisan bills that we did, I wrote the, co wrote the energy title on that bill and worked for Minnesota's Renewable Energy. My first bill was a veterans bill with Johnny Isaacson of Georgia. Uh, that was on. That, that was a veterans bill. Uh, we had this propane crisis this past year. I have a bill that's co-sponsored by Rob Portman, Republican of Ohio. I have worked across party lines and gotten things done. Part of the reason we had this meltdown six years ago, five years ago was because the credit rating agencies, standards and boards gave AAA ratings to all this junk. I did a bipartisan bill to, to, to regulate those credit rating agencies so they can't give AAA to the structured financial products. And I did that with Senator Roger Wicker, a Republican of Mississippi. Uh, look, you can slice and dice these numbers any way you want to come up with, with things that say pretty ridiculous things. But I work for Minnesota every day that I'm there, and I've been proud to do that. Thank you, Senator Franklin. Let, let's get to the issue now. Rather, I, excuse me. I, I was told that we get a rebuttal. We'll give you each 30 seconds if you want to rebut each other's uh, negative ads. Yeah, you know, I, I'd love a rebuttal. Because one of the things I'm going to ask everyone to do is watch Senator Franklin's actions, not his words. Political measures. Rank Senator Franken 100 out of 100 senators in their ability to co-sponsor legislation. That's a fact, not my opinion. He is the most partisan senator in the Democratic Party. That's a fact, not my opinion. He has done nothing to accelerate the polymet mine. He has not approved the Keystone Pipeline, which has been under review for six years. Polymet's been under review for eight years. Look at his actions, not what he says. Senator Franken, 30 seconds. We can take these issues one by one. Look, that that study that the uh, most partisan said that Ted Cruz was one of the most nonpartisan <laughs> senators in the United States. <laughs> He's the guy who led the shutdown of the government. 
<laughs> so if you're citing that kind of thing, I think that shows you know, we, we, they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Okay. L. Franken is the Ted Cruz of the Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> so the Ted Cruz is right there, uh, more more bipartisan than a majority of the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to some of the issues.